He was voted one of the hardest men in football, playing for some of the biggest clubs during the height of his career. But Neil Razor Ruddock has revealed he clinically died recently during emergency heart surgery after years of heavy drinking took its toll. He joins us now with his wife, Leah. It's, well, it's lovely to see you both. Um, Hi, you. Morning. It, morning. Neil, this was um, an awful, awful thing to have happened. You were on the operating table during emergency heart surgery um, and you technically died. I mean, thank God they brought you back again. But your health has been an issue, hasn't it? Um, how are you doing right now? Well, I'm fine. Uh, I mean, it was through uh, Harry's Hero TV show the first time. My cholesterol was up a little bit. Then the second series, uh, the production company took me to to see the doctors in Canterbury just to make sure I was OK. And uh, my heartbeat was racing at 130 uh, uh, at rest. 130 so, um, at rest? I, just, I, had, I had no symptoms. I didn't feel, you know, feel out of breath. Every now and then, um, I got a bit giddy. And I was thinking, you know, with ex-footballers heading the balls, I was I was feeling the worst, you know, and thinking, oh, my, you know, it's something wrong with my head. And then I got tested out and was beating 130. So basically that to uh, stop my heart, then give me the, the shock, you know, when you see on telly, stand back and the shock. Uh, so you stop my heart and they, uh, they kicked back in after the third time. Uh, so, you know, I was dead. They said I was dead for a minute. I mean, how does that make you feel, Neil, to, to think that you were... Technically dead for a, a whole minute. It's, it's, that could have been it. A, Piers, you know, I was, I was a big drinker. I'm a, I'm a lads lad. Um, I always thought nothing would happen to me. So it was a, it was a kick up the backside. That the, it, was, it was lucky that Harry Zero's show was on because I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gone to the, you know, the doctor. I was always a happy go lucky, a happy go lucky chap, thinking that nothing's going to happen to me. So it was just a. You know, it was a, as I said, it was a big shock to me. And if, yeah. if I can uh, thank a couple of people, like I thank Lee Hanning, Simon Needham, Lee Elam, and Tony Clark. Without them around me at the time, you know, they sort of got me to a hospital. Leah was at home with the kids. You know, I was really, really struggling at the time, and they they was helping Leah with the kids, taking them to to school and back. Well, so let's bring in, let's bring in Leah. Leah, you, you've I mean, been you've together been, for fifteen if, years. Fifteen years. You? Yeah. I, the one thing came out here that Neil said he was at his worst doing. Three or four bottles of wine a day, easy peasy, plus spirits, beers and cocktails. You've obviously been living with him through that lad's lad period. Uh, yeah. And it all came back to, to roost, didn't it, with this moment when he nearly died. What, what do you feel about the build-up to that moment and then when it happened? And how has he been doing since? Well, to be honest with you, it's just been it's been very sort of like a roller coaster. It's been very stressful, as you can imagine, for me and uh, the children and everyone that loves him. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we, we, he's, we're getting him on the right track now. The, the bottles of wine, he's not really drinking hard. Well, nowhere near as much as he has been. You know, we're, we're on organic produce now and we just, we're, we're looking to the future. So... We're not looking back. If you know. And I wonder, Neil, it's just right now in the middle of the virus, we yeah. know that we've all got to take a look at ourselves, haven't we? Yeah. Because... Yeah, I think, I and think I wonder whether it's, that it's has important. been a wake-up call as well for you. It is, it is important. I think I've got to get a message out there that, you know, when you're in over your 40s, it's easy to just go and get tested. You know, just go and have a blood test. Because we didn't know. We lost Justin Edinburgh, over, you know, just over a year ago. And he was the fittest 49-year-old man I've ever seen, you know? So... Mm. And he didn't get tested and when we say we lost him. So it's easy to go and get tested. I had no symptoms. I didn't know my heart was racing at 130. And after that, they, they, they put a machine on me when I was sleeping and I found out that every night my, my heart was stopping for seven seconds. So that's well, why I've, got, I've, had a, I've had a pacemaker fit in You had a few and mates, I, Neil. I didn't know that. I didn't know that, Piers. I, I thought I was sleeping fine. No, no and, and, and obviously now, now you've realised how lucky you are, I guess, to be alive. A lot of friends... Uh, contacted yeah. you. One was Robbie Williams, had an hour-long yeah. Zoom call with you. Tell us about that. Well, he, he, uh, he got in touch with me. He rang me up. I, you know, he, we were best of friends back in the 90s and he moved to LA and we, we lost touch. And uh, I think he found out what I'd been going through. And he got in touch, he rang me. Then we had a, a Zoom call for 10 minutes which lasted about an hour and a half because he don't stop talking. And he was, <laughs> he, was, he was just worried and worried about me. And so... The, the best thing about it, I'm going to LA soon. He's invited us to LA to go and, go and see him and spend some time with his family and sort of uh, be my counsellor, so to speak. Well, that's an unlikely pairing. Before we let you go, I want a one word or two word answer here. You're known as one of the hardest men in world football history. Yeah. Who do you think, from all the people you played against, 
is the hardest, other than yourself? Oh, Jim. oh Jimmy Cates, without without a shadow of a doubt. Jimmy really? Cates. Yeah, oh, yes, Jimmy. When anyone back in the 80s, 90s uh, would have messed with Jimmy Cates. Piers, before I go, can I just say that my mum said, if, if that Piers Morgan's horrible to you, she said, I want you to get in the car, I'll drive to the studios and sort him out, right? <laughs> can I just say... You can't do that at two minutes. Can I just say, even know, though, we are, so, even said, though we are socially that. distanced, Neil, the idea I that I would take I on Razor that, Ruddock said, listen, is listen, madness. Two metres. She went, well, wear your mask and gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your mother, I may look stupid, but I'm not stupid enough to take on Razor Ruddock, even and if you I have had heart, that uh, heart issues. Is that a Liverpool tie you've got on there? It's an Arsenal tie. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, all right. <laughs>